Okay, so um, what I want to look about look at today is um, building a kernel for an Android phone without the ROM source. So you can look this up on my website, uh, thealaskalinuxuser.com or thealaskalinuxuser.wordpress.com. Either one will take you where you need to go. Uh, but the first step is we need to install a few extra build tools. And uh, again, you can just follow these steps right off of my website. Uh, right off of my website there um, and it's uh, pretty straightforward but I wanted to show you because sometimes it's not practical to download the entire ROM source code when you just want to work on one tiny thing in the kernel um, so the big thing you're going to need is tool chains and I have two links here for some tool chains that you can use um, and uh, and then I go on to point out all the steps. So it's, it's I hope, instructive and straightforward. But uh, you can check it out and see, see for yourself. Uh, this is going to take a minute for this to download because I do have fairly slow internet. So we'll move that over here. Let's take a look at it. <clears throat> We're just going to create a new folder. Uh, we'll call this uh, kernel work. And we're going to copy our entire uh, Samsung Galaxy S4 kernel and just paste it right in here. So it's going to take this a minute to complete. Um, I highly recommend building in the ROM itself uh, because there's a lot of extra things that you have to do when you're building outside of the ROM. Um, particularly it doesn't build a boot image package for you. It doesn't build uh, everything you need for the kernel. It just builds the kernel itself. So kind of is dependent on you. So we're going to grab this tool chain that I've been using for building this. We'll just paste it in here. But again there's some links to some tool chains uh, on my site there or you can Google and grab your own tool chain. It's just kind of a preference of what tool chain you want to use. <coughs> And um, <clears throat> so uh, now we uh, need to do some sort of, uh, you know, would be the time to do some sort of modification for the kernel, like the modifications we've been looking at in the previous videos in this series. Um, hopefully you found those to be uh, educational and enjoyable and uh, give you some ideas of some things you can do on a kernel. Uh, but the next thing we've got to do is open up this uh, make file and we're going to scroll down oh, about halfway through. There it is. Uh, well, I guess it's only in the first, like, maybe 20%. But anyways, so this arch is ARM. That's what we're building. And then cross-compile, we need that to point specifically to our tool chain. So, for instance, I give an example there. Um, you know, if you're following the steps in the guide, I actually specify what folder to put everything in so the example works. But in this case, we'll just get our Linaro uh, ARM Linux uh, bin. And uh, this is where, um, where our tools are going to be. So, um, or you can go, here we go, into the, into the bin file. So we copy that, and we're just going to paste that into our cross-compile there. And uh, you notice this ARM EABI, all of these start with ARM Linux new EABI HF. So we would need to change um, ours to match that. So if we copy that, and we'll just paste here, it really depends on the uh, tool kit that you're using, or excuse me, the tool chain that you're using, um, what prefix is in the front of all of those files. So this is the prefix for the Linaro, Linario one that I'm using, so we'll go ahead and change it to that. Um, so once we've, once we've set these variables for the build host, uh, we're still waiting for that file, those uh, programs to finish downloading. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, look at our kernel. Um, Let's see.
just kind of wait for that to finish. Um, all right, so just skip through till it was done uh, doing that so I didn't have to waste your time waiting for my slow internet. Uh, so we open the terminal and we're going to change directory. So we've uh, changed uh, to our directory here. We're all set up to build. We've got uh, the make file uh, edited and uh, and now we're ready to to build. So what we should do is make clean. We want to make sure that we clean up our repository or excuse me our kernel directory and then we're going to make mr proper which uh, just is a way for cleaning up the configuration files and if we type make menu config it's going to pop up with this wonderful uh, box here we can make this a little bigger and uh, the problem is is that just making a generic menu config uh, we don't actually have everything that we need um, we need to load a specific configuration file um, to make sure that uh, we are set up for what we want to build. So if we go to our configuration file, you know, JF arch arm configs, and we take our uh, default configuration that we've been working with, we copy that and we paste it here. And we'll just rename it something easy. Uh, we'll just call it cm uh, config cm config and so if we uh, try to um, use this make menu config now we can come down here and we can load an alternate configuration file and we can say cm config oh, did i not spell that right let me make sure cm config there we go all right, so now it's loaded up with all the information that we had set in our configuration file before. So we can go through, for instance, we can use this forward slash and we can say, all right, let's find the Lionheart. And it says, hey, Lionheart, uh, it can be found under the CPU power management and then under CPU frequency scaling and under that option is where you will find it. Um, and then you can choose, um, that's for setting the default, and then you can choose for it itself under CPU power management, CPU frequency scaling. So we can go down to CPU power management, CPU frequency scaling, and there we go. We see Lionheart, and then we can also say what's our default, which it is set at the moment. Um, Notice the, the verbiage here. Lionheart right here has to be chosen. Notice there's no um, brackets around it like these other governors. And that's because if we choose a different um, default, we'll say on demand. I'm using the space bar to set that. Now notice on demand has no brackets around it. Because it's the default, it has to be there. So anything you set as the default has to be, and those thus are not able to be changed. Also notice the performance governor can never be changed because that's the fallback default if another governor does not work and that was set um, in the uh, in the files that we looked at when we were adding the default governor. You can go back to that video if you'd like to check that out and you can set something else as the fallback uh, governor. But uh, so we'll say uh, notice that it has this plus and minus at the top here minus here saying there's more on the list and we'll go ahead and set the uh, lion heart again so if we exit out of that we'll exit out of this um, you could of course just go through everything one at a time and look at it and that is a good way to go but it may take a while uh, I really like um, searching we can just use that forward slash and say hey let's look for that FIOPS that we installed. So FIOPS is going to be under the Enable the Block Layer I.O. Schedulers. So we can go, let's see, where is that? Enable the Block Layer, 
and IO schedulers, and there's that IOPS or FIOPS, FIOPS is right there. The default is the row, and uh, so of course that has to be chosen. And we can say, hey, I want to have the deadline um, also, so we can, you know, say let's build those. We could even say, hey, let's build this test one as a, you know, a module, except for I can't modulize it if I don't have uh, modules enabled. So I'd have to um, enable modules. And you do that, enable loadable module support. We would say yes, and then we'd say, um, you know, we want to have module loading and unloading and version support and, you know, checksums and all that kind of stuff. And then we could go back to our block layer and we could say IO schedulers and hopefully now we could say yes M for module we're gonna make these two modules that we can load in later and modules is just a way that you can keep something outside the kernel that you can load in you don't have to have them around saves on a little bit of space in the kernel itself um, and does allow for a little more user control because you can add them or remove them it also allows people to build uh, their own modules to put into your kernel as long as they have the right um, the right code. So, um, but yeah, so you would you would make all the changes that you want to change. Um, you can search for things using that forward slash. You can ask for help. Um, let's see. Uh, so with the question mark, networking support, whatever you're looking at at the moment. So we'll go to uh, we'll go to that. IO schedulers so we can look at them and what you'll find is let's do the question mark here and it's what we put into the um, kconfig file so um, we'll just exit out of there but so we're all done we've completed we exit do we wish to save our new configuration and we say yes and so we've saved that configuration and now we're ready to build and all we have to do to build is just type make so here we go we type make and uh, again like I said there's a lot of things that you have to set up um, oh <laughs> that's funny so uh, you know so I specified an alternative make file uh, when I was doing that menu config and so what I need to do now is move or change that cm config file to be dot config because that's what it's looking for right here configuration file dot config not found so I either need to specify that I want this other one or I need to rename it to dot config so there we go and we'll use um, make so here it is it's going to go through and build the kernel now again I really recommend doing this through a ROM source code rather than separately because this is just going to build the kernel and it's not going to build uh, everything that you need inside uh, the boot image um, you know uh, partition so you essentially have to break down your own boot image and insert this kernel into it and then zip it back up and then uh, send it. So another problem that you run into, and I wanted to leave this in here, is this kernel builds perfectly inside the ROM, but it does not build very well outside. You see here we have a failure, and uh, why did it fail? Well, we'd have to actually go through and trace some things out here to see the real problem, but if we just copy this back into the, where we were it's going to build perfectly fine uh, if we build it inside the ROM itself inside the source code and that's because there's a lot of flags and things that get set up when you're building to make sure that uh, builds properly so again I really highly recommend building with inside of the ROM source code itself but it is an option and I wanted to show you that it was uh, possible to run outside of the source code and here's how you would do it so hopefully if you go this route you have a little more success than I do I just build within the ROM source code because um, I find that to be a lot uh, easier and uh, usually works a lot better